Today's nuclear medicine snack is about labeling of red blood cells, the technique of it for multi-gated acquisition scans or MUGA scans that um, is a radionucleic angiography method to look at the blood flow in the heart or more particularly the left ventricle. So we use technetium and I will have a very technical technetium chemistry presentation at some point because this is a topic that's very near and dear to my heart but you have to understand some basic principles before we go into red blood cell labeling so if you look at this you will see that there is a total of two three four five six seven electrons in the outer shell of technetium and these are open for activity and interaction with other molecules in chemistry in order to get the technetium plus seven as it is during um, when you get it from the generator in the form of patechnitate you want to add some electrons to get it two plus four which makes it ready for labeling then likes giving electrons away this is your stannous chloride in your kit and it's the ideal companion for technetium to up the oxidation state to a useful species. This is a very complex sketch, so you are more than welcome to pause and read it for yourself. But basically what we do when we label, we take the eluate with the coordination state of 7, we reduce it with 10 to form technetium plus 4, and during this process, it binds with a ligand. In the case of red blood cell labeling, it will be technetium pyrophosphate. We do not label the red blood cell with technetium pyrophosphate. Indeed, we only label it with technetium at the coordination state plus four, but we need the pyrophosphate to keep the molecule stable until it reaches the red blood cell. So your tin is added to the patient's blood and it swarms around in the body and it goes inside the red blood cells by passive diffusion in and out. And when the technetium per technetate reaches the tin, it gets oxidized to the plus four state and it's reactive. So we don't want the tin around the red blood cells, but rather exclusively inside the red blood cells. So during the process, you will take your um, tin, um, pyrophosphate the tin pyrophosphate goes to the red blood cell the pyrophosphate keeps the tin ready for action in this case then the tin is released from the pyrophosphate the pyrophosphate dissipates in the body and the tin crosses the red blood cell we need a pyrophosphate to keep the tin reactive because tin can react with anything in the body so we really need to keep it um, at the, in a condition that it will react, so it is necessary to add a pyrophosphate, otherwise the method will not work this well. So now your tin is inside the red blood cell, your protectinitate is now added to the red blood cell mixture or injected into the patient, it goes to where the tin is and the tin gives off its two electrons and that changes the protectinitate to technetium 4. Inside the cell, the technetium 4. So the first method is the Brookhaven method, and indeed you also have kits that is on the market that has all of the consumables in that you need to label for, for this method. So you would add the tin ions. Unabsorbed tin ions will be neutralized by sodium hypochlorite in the next step. So they are uh, reduced and they don't work anymore. And then they are useless and then you add your technetium and only the useful tin ions inside the red blood cells reduce your technetium and then you can inject this into the patient. The EDTA method, which I like myself a little bit more, the tin ions are added, the unabsorbed tin is caught up by the chelator called EDTA. It is washed off completely, and then you add your radioactivity, your protectinitate, and it only binds inside the active tin ions inside the patient. There is also other methods where you inject the um, 
tin and the pyrophosphate into the patient. You wait 15 minutes or so and then you inject the pertignitate and you label inside the patient. You get some mixed versions of the two methods and then you get the in vitro methods I discussed. There is a lot of safety considerations. This is uh, a method that really needs the concentration of the operator so that mistakes are not made because we are working with radioactivity and blood. It's a double danger and you have special populations, pediatrics, all of these um, incidences where you have to be careful. Of course, also your biohazard aspects and also you're working with needles and all of those things. So you have to be very careful and very focused when you do these methods. This is what I wanted to say about this topic. I hope it helped for, for a better understanding. Please comment down below if there is still areas of uncertainty or areas where you don't agree with what I said, as well as future topics you want me to elaborate a bit more on or totally different topics. I also want to thank BioRender for their lovely service that they were offering the scientific community to make illustrations as I did for this presentation. Thank you.